What's up guys, in this Figma tutorial for beginners, we're going to make this cool shoe ecom platform. We're going to make the landing page that you can see now. We're going to take it easy. We're going to do it completely for beginners in Figma. You're going to learn how to use it as we go along. And by the end of it, you're going to have a prototype to show. And then you can follow the brief and do your own version. So let's go. Quickly before we start, we're going to be following a brief for this. Now I've attached the brief in the description and you can read it and follow along with yourself. I'm going to flash it up on screen now, but really quickly, we've had a letter. So this is from Blackout, to an athletic shoe company in the UK. They've got several stores all over the, on the country. They need the UX UI designer to basically make an online platform. Their competitors are JD Sports and Sports Direct and they have a men's, women's and a children's section. Each month they have a featured shoe where they basically buy a lot of one shoe and they need to get rid of it and that's going to go at the top of the section and then they want some, uh, the other top selling shoes are the most popular shoes so they want to feature that for men's and women's and then at the bottom they have a discount section where if you sign up for the newsletter to receive marketing you get 10% off. So we're going to follow this brief and you know we'll create from there. So let's get into it. We're going to learn Figma as we go along, so not to worry. But the first thing we need to do is do an artboard. So if you just press, if you press A, or you go to this icon in the top left-hand corner called Frame, then here this is where we just it, it does exactly what it says in the tin. So we choose a frame. I normally like working with desktop, so you can click desktop and it lays it out pixel perfect for you. If you wanted to do a mobile version or tablet versions, which we will do later on in the course, then in the frame we can also get different um, different sizes. But now we've got our frame. For this design, I think we're going to do a dark theme layout. So normally websites have like a white background, but for dark themes they have a black background. And I think because our company is called Blackout, it just maybe makes it a little bit cooler. So what we want to do is click where it says desktop one, and then this will give us a right hand panel here which is all our design options so we go down to fill and we just hit the little square then we can click and drag down to make it black you could also click the numbers this is called a hex value so if you type f that makes it white and if you type zero that makes it black don't worry about these over time you will just learn how to use them so what we're going to make first is it's called the header so it, it, it's the bit that sits at the top which has the logo it has it's going to have the search box which we need to create because it says it in the brief and it's going to have the different titles of the sections so we need to make a square so in the top corner here this is where our tools are within figma we're going to hit the square tool and then we're just going to click on the canvas and we're going to drag a square out and when you're dragging as you get to the corners of the layout see the little red line that appears that means that it's hitting hitting the lines so we're going to zoom in on my, on my I'm using a Mac so I press command space and then I click to zoom in but you can also use the zoom tool in Figma which is a command minus or command plus on the keyboard to zoom in and out so if I hit the square I'm going to I'm going to do the sizing but I'm actually going to do it by the numbers so I'm going to make this a little bit thinner so over here on the right this is my detailed layout this is where you can really get into uh, the nitty gritty of your designs so w is width so we don't need to change that but we have h for height so i'm going to make it 50 pixels and that's going to make quite a narrow header maybe it's a little bit too small for this let's try 60. we can always make it a little bit bigger later but then i'm going to give it a color because at the moment it's a default gray i'm going to make it uh i'm going to make i'm going to make it not all the way black i'm going to give it um just a dark gray just so you can differentiate it on a page. Now we're going to zoom in and we're going to add the title for the company. So I'm going to grab my text tool, which is up here in the top. Then I'm going to click and drag where I want and I'm going to type the word blackout. That is our company name. Now the company doesn't have a logo. Um, in, a, in real world, you probably would get a logo in here. But for this one, we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to just give it we're going to, first of all, we're going to give it a size. We're going to put it maybe about 20 pixels. And then you can choose the font. It's up to you what you want. Um, we're going to choose something which looks looks kind of cool. Uh, I like the I like Montserrat. Montserrat's a font which you might have installed. Uh, I'm going to make it Montserrat. I'm going to make it Montserrat black. 
which is a nice thick modern font. It's a sans serif font. So it reminds me of GQ magazine. They had very similar uh, fonts to Montserrat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click on my title. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit bigger than 20. I'm gonna make it 24. Then I'm gonna click on the text, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna shift click on the on the on the bar that we just made that selected them both. And now I'm gonna show you how you can um, position them relatively together. So once two things are selected up here. These are your auto, auto alignment features. So if you click this one, this will vert, this will center them vertically. And that's what we want. We want the blackout to be right in the middle. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna move blackout right to the edge with my keyboard. And now if you press shift and then the right arrow, one, two, three, four, you can do it proportionally and it will move it across. So every time you do an arrow, it then does it by 10 pixels. Now that our title is in the right place, we can actually preview our design. So in the top right hand corner, you see this little play icon. If you just hit that, it goes into presentation mode. So it might take a couple of seconds to load. Um, but what Figma is doing is, this is what it will actually look like in a browser. And if you hover over to the top right and click share prototype, you can, um, you can see this, it says anyone with the link can view. And you can just click copy link and then you can paste that in the browser or you can send it to your friends and it will just create a link where people can see the website you've made. So you can view this website already. We haven't done much, but at least it, it shows you where, where we're going and it, it's a good starting point. So now that we've got that in place, I actually think the title's a little bit too small. Now we'll look at it like this. Uh, so throughout this course i'm going to be doing these on the fly so you'll actually see me change my mind as we make them but it's actually quite good it shows you i'm not just creating something polished and and you are either um and, and it's okay to change your mind when you look at something you, you might think oh it looks a bit small um designers you know using your brain to to just keep constantly looking at what you've done and and, and see if you think it looks right a lot of it is look and a lot of it is um it's all proportion. So the way I like to think about designs is, you know, is this space underneath this equal to the one to the side of it and to the one above it? Like a lot of great beauty, like um, Greek designs, old buildings, Georgian design buildings, they're all mathematically, you know, even. I like things that are even, and I think that makes design look beautiful. So whenever we go through this, we're always gonna try and make things even whenever possible. I think that's kind of a key to beauty. So in this top bar, the first thing we're going to make is the search bar as well. So we're going to grab another rectangle, and in the top right this time, we're going to draw out our rectangle. So what we actually want to do with this rectangle is we're going to give it curved corners. So this is the first time we've done this. So we're going to get our rectangle. We're going to position it vertically. Like, oops, I missed it. So we're going to position it vertically again, which is, a, which is this one here. And then we're going to give it curve corners. So in the top right, you see we've got these six options. So the bottom right, one of the options is the corner radius. So if you just click 20 on that, it's going to make it quite curved. So for this search bar, we're going to try 30. We're going to try and make it really curved. That's quite nice. And then we're going to make the search box. We're going to make it, we're going to make it just a lighter gray than the other gray. And we're going to move it in. One, two, three, 30 pixels, the same as the other one. We can preview it again. Now, ah, this is this is something I, I've made an error. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to fix it. So if you go to this preview mode, you can see my search box is actually not in the design. So, but it is in the design of here. So on the left panel, this is our layers panel. So this, the one with the little hash icon, that's our viewer, and then within there is the the blackout logo and the rectangle, which is the header. But you'll see rectangle two which I can double click and call search box. It's actually not in the frame. So I need to click and drag that and move it into the frame, but I've put it underneath the, the rectangle. So I need to click it above the rectangle. That's my order. So it goes in the order now. So now if I go back to this, uh, you can see that it's actually in the frame. So my search box is in here now, but it looks a bit too big. So I'm going to make the height. I'm going to change the height of it to 40. Then I'm going to, Constantly keep reposition it, center it, check it. 
yeah, it looks a bit better. So now we need an icon. So we're going to go into Google and we're going to go into a website called Icon Finder. And within Icon Finder, this is a place where you can get free icons. We're going to take, we're going to click search. Then within search, we're going to on the left hand side we're going to make sure it says free and then we're going to click no backlink so that means that we can use it in whatever project we want and we've got <coughs> sorry we haven't got to leave a backlink for the author but i mean you could click all licenses it depends sometimes i mean it's only fair that you, you leave a backlink to the person's website if it's an icon that you want to use but for this example we're just going to do no backlink so then we're going to choose this magnifying glass here which look nice we're going to click on it And then we're going to download, so see here you can have PNG or SVG. I always go for SVG. So SVG means it's a scalable vector graphic. So what that means is uh, whatever, whatever size we put it in, it's always going to look great. So I've just copied and pasted that across and I can um, change the color to white. So you can see how crisp this looks. So it's not made up of pixels, it's made up of vectors. Whereas if we would if we would have got the PNG version, if we would have zoomed in on it, we would have seen uh, little edges because it's made of pixels and not vectors. Vectors is a mathematical formula, which means I can take this and make it absolutely huge. And you see it still looks crisp. It like redraws the image. It's a, it's a new type of file for the web, for icons in particular. So I'm going to get my icon. We're going to make the little search box small and we're going to put it on the right hand side in here. We're going to make sure that it's centered. And then we're going to check that out. So we've got we've got our search box there. It's probably a bit too long, so we're going to make the width 450, and then we're going to drag that across again with a three. So there we go. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. And then the final thing for this header, we're going to make our sections, which is our men's, women's, and children's. So we're going to take text again. We're going to create. Uh, we're going to create something that says men's. But this time we're going to make it, we're going to keep it in Montserrat, which is the font that I'm using for this. We're going to make it 20 and we're going to make it, we're going to make it regular. And then we're going to put it, we're going to align it. So as I click, you can see all these red lines that appears. So this red one here that goes underneath blackout is called the baseline. And that's what we want to align it with. So that means that it's perfectly in line with this. So we're going to put that there. We're going to move it over to about there. Then we're going to we're going to copy and paste it, and then we're going to move it across. One, two, three, four. I'm going to move it 50 pixels across. I'm going to do I'm going to do one called women's or women's, and then you can see I keep getting the box, and I'm just resizing the box until there. And then I'm going to get another one, and then I'm going to call it children's. And then I'm just going to move it across, and then you can see it automatically knows when the spacing is correct. And then it says uh, it says 29. So there, I've got three men's, women's, and children's. I've got my title up there. And then the last thing I want, because this is an e-commerce site, we're going to have a basket as well. So I'm going to go back to Icon Finder. I'm going to type in. I'm, oops, I'm going to type in basket. Then I'm going to make sure it's got no look, no backlink, and it's free. And we're going to choose one that's suitable for the site. So this one's kind of quite minimal and quite nice. Make sure I get the SVG. Then I'm going to paste the basket in. I'm going to change the color to white. Move it up to the bar. If you hold Shift and you then click the corner, you can proportionally scale it down. Then I always align it with the red icons move it 20 pixels away have a preview of that that looks fine then i'm gonna the next thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna group this so grouping is really good it just allows you to um section your website off really so i'm gonna select everything by clicking and dragging and then i'm gonna i can right click oops Right click and I can click group selection or I can 
press command G. So that's got my group one here in the top and I can click the little arrow and expand there or close it down. And then if I double click it, I can call this header. Now that's my header done. But then there's one more thing which I actually want to do to the header. So I'm going to click, I'm going to select my group and then I'm going to click this button here called fix position when scrolling. So if we had a really long page, you actually want your header to stay all the time visible for the user. So that's so they can always get back to search, they can go to different sections. So you might not be able to see it in the preview at the moment because the page isn't that big. So I'm going to click on desktop and then I'm going to actually drag the bottom of the page quite long. Right. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to draw a rectangle in the page, just for example. So now what you'll see is in preview, oops. So this is a preview. So you can see at the top I've got my header and then we've got the rectangle. But as I scroll down the page, see the way the rectangle goes actually behind the header? That's because the header is in fixed position. So that means that all the content of the page will actually go behind the header and it will stay there for the website while the rest of the website goes along. So now we can delete that and then we can get on with making some of the content for the website. The first bit of content we're going to put on the page, it's called the hero section. So in the brief, it mentioned that they have a showcase product every month, which is probably the latest shoe, which they bought a load of stock of. And that's the most important thing to the business. So we're going to showcase that really loud and proud at the top of the page. So whenever you look through websites, you always see one piece of content, mainly larger than the others at the top. And that's called the hero section. So for this, we're going to grab a rectangle. Then we're going to draw it on the page. And we're going to just make it full width and then make the height around 400. We'll try that for now. So that's just a rectangle. So now we need a bit of content to go in there. So if you go on, if you go in your browser and go on over to a website called unsplash.com, this is a brilliant website for getting royalty free images. And all I've done is I've typed in Nike and there's loads of images here. So we're just going to presume this is a Nike shoe that we're selling. And I just found this, my favorite color is red. So I found this cool red one at the top. So all I did is click copy, copy image, head on back to Figma, and now I'm going to show you a concept called masking. So paste your image in, then just resize it so it looks like it'll fit on the canvas. And now we need to move it onto the canvas, but we're going to move it above the rectangle that we made. So this is a concept called masking. So we want basically this rectangle shape to cut out everything on the shoe other than the bit that's in the rectangle. So we select both, then we right click, and then we click user's mask. So now it's not showing the rectangle, but it's showing the space where the rectangle is. And now we can get and we can resize our image and we can put the shoe in the picture where we want. So now I'm just gonna move on over to that side. I basically want a space on this left hand side where I can put um, the, the title of the shoe and a button. So I think that looks kind of cool. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give the title, I'm going to give this a title. So I'm going to get my text and I'm going to click it here and I'm going to call it, I'm just going to call it Nike Free, which seems to be the make. So I'm going to give that a size of, let's try 100. Maybe that's a bit too big. Let's try 60. Make it, make it semi bold. Maybe, maybe bold. What's it look like light? See, I'm just trying these now. Bold. That looks good. So we've got our Nike free there. And then normally underneath the headline, which we can make this, we can, we can uh, make this box a bit smaller by clicking on it. We'll get another title and we'll just click in down there and then we'll just give it a subheader, which is normally just a little bit of information about the shoe. And that might just be like the fastest shoe. Let's just call it that, ever. So this is Nike's, I don't know, latest and greatest invention that I've just made up. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to position that now. So we want that maybe a little bigger. <laughs> Sorry, maybe maybe um, 26. And then just how I reposition type is, I take it right up to the baseline, that's the bottom, try and get it in the corner, and then give it 20 pixels down which is shift and press this and press the arrow key down twice. So to me, that looks kind of a nice type lockup. 
and then you can select both of them and hit command G and then you've got a group and then you can just call that type and just to keep things nice like I could call this mass group hero group and then um, you just want to make everything nice and neat in the left hand side it looks more professional but it means you can also you know go back and find things later so then we're gonna introduce a button beneath that so how we make a button is we're gonna get some uh, we're gonna get a square we're gonna draw the square out then we're gonna give the square rounded corners we're gonna give it 20 maybe 30 for this maybe maybe even 50 so we're gonna give it a pill shape and then we're gonna position the pill shape one two three there and then we're going to put some text within the pill. There's a few different ways we can learn how to do buttons, but we're going to use, we're going to learn the simple way now. And then in later videos, I'm going to show you how to make more in-depth component sets. But this is how it started with buttons, and it's probably the best way to learn first um, if you're just making your first button because things can get a little bit complex with component sets. So we're going to make, we're going to leave the button as grey. Let's make this text 22. Then you've got your text alignment tools here on the right, so we'll center that text. We'll select them both, then we'll click center align, middle align, then we'll group them. Button. And there we go. We've got, we can select them, put them in, and then we'll just call the hero text. Then we can even select that group, select that hero, center aligner, and then we can zoom out. And now things are looking good. So we've got our hero section at the top. So the next couple of sections we want to introduce are um, the most popular sections. So we're going to do this. We're going to have um, the men's one first, and then we're going to have a ladies section underneath. And we're going to do this with four different products in each one. So we're going to give our section a title. I'm going to call it most popular. We're going to select the text, and we're going to left align it. I'm going to make that text around 30. We want it. Uh, we want the text to be bigger than the subheader, uh, but not as big as the main headline. And maybe we want it a little bit weightier too. So when we click and drag around, you see we've got this um, this line where it aligns it. So we want to give it a bit of a sp space. One, two, three, four, five. So we want to give it a bit of a gap. So we've got our most popular section here. Let's call it most popular for men. Now, we're going to build our first box. So, we're going to get our tool. Now, probably the easiest way to do this is, is to first, we want to actually apply a layout grid to the page so we know what size to make things. So, if we select our page, then we can go to this thing called layout grid. We need to select the canvas desktop one then you click plus and then we're going to apply a grid to the page so the color of the grid we're going to make sure it's a, like a light color because we're using a dark theme and we're going to change from grid to columns and then we're going to make it a four column page because we want four across and we want to give it a margin on each side so let's try maybe a margin of i want the margin basically to go to where the type goes so we'll give it like a 60 margin there we go, so there's our four columns now. This won't show up in the actual preview, so if you go to preview, you can see um, it's loading up, but it's not loaded up the actual grid. So, now let's make our, let's make our squares. So, I'm gonna click the rectangle tool, and then I'm gonna draw out my first box, and this is gonna be my first product. So I'm gonna select the box, and I'm gonna give it some rounded corners, I'm gonna make it 20, and then I'm gonna make the color of the box just slightly off gray, so it just lifts above the canvas. Now in this box, I'm gonna have a picture of a shoe, I'm gonna have the, the, the name of the shoe, and I'm gonna have a button that says find out more. So we can do this quite quickly. So let's go on over to Google Chrome, and now we're gonna find some images of some shoes to use. So this is you, you can use whatever images you want. So. For this example, I'm gonna choose this green one, looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna copy the image. 
But again, before I'm going to use the the masking tool that we use. So I'm going to draw a box. Now, I want to I want to give it around the corners, but I don't want the bottom half to be rounded. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we just want the top two corners to be rounded, because I'm only taking up half the box, I want the bottom half for text. Then I go over here and I click this one, and this this basically means you can do independent corners. So I can give the top one twenty, give the next one twenty, but leave the other two square on. So then I can click that. I then want to basically paste. I'm going to click out of it, and then I want to paste my shoe. I want to paste my shoe above that layer, but actually still on the canvas. So I'm just going to resize it. I'm going to move it onto the canvas there. So you see I didn't need to move it in the left-hander. It just automatically did it. So I could actually have dragged that over as well, which would have been fine. But I'm going to select that, select that one, right-click, use as mask. Then I'm going to reposition the shoe. So there we've got quite a cool shoe. I'm going to add some text here. I'm going to call it... Uh, um, what's this? What's this? What's that say on the shoe? I need to give it... It's called a... What's it called? I'm just, I'm just going to call it... This. I'm just going to call it... Nike Super. I don't actually know what it says. <laughs> Make it 20. See what that looks like. I mean, you can use... <coughs> You can use real shoes, you can go on and use whatever you want for this. So for this example, I'm just going to call it a Nike Super V 2022. So I'm just making this up. Uh, but you can be as realistic as you want. You can take as much time on on this as you want. I'm just repositioning that. Um, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Try, try 26. Take that box wide. Then underneath it. Now I'm going to show you um, a design trick which we use when, we're, um, when we don't know what copy to put and copy is just a design word for um, for text. So if you go on Google and you type in this word Lorem Ipsum. So I learned this from magazine design and then there's a website called Lorem Ipsum Generator. So Lorem Ipsum um, is just dummy text that you can uh, generate as much as you want to place hold for things. So normally I just click generate Lorem Ipsum and I just select a load of text, uh, paste it in where I need text, then I'll change the size to tw um, body, maybe 14 is normally a good size for body copying. So you can see it doesn't make sense. The, te the text doesn't make sense, but that's fine when you're, um, when you're working on the actual layout, uh, the actual, does it, you know, it can, it can come later. So as we zoom out there, I'm just going to have, I'm just going to copy and paste the text and then I'm going to click it and then I'm going to put, I'm going to put learn more. I'm going to do that and I'm going to give it a little, give it a bold. So there's my button. It's only a text link. Then I'm going to click and resize that there. So if I zoom out now and preview that, You can see I've got one of my boxes. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to group all of this. I'm going to click group selection. And then I'm going to shift drag it across to duplicator. And now I've got four products in my men's section. So now you can go through and you can um, change each one, give them whatever titles you want. In this design, I'm not gonna waste your time by doing that. I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna choose some images. I'm gonna go to the image file. I'm gonna paste it over it. And I'm just gonna resize the images, but you can go through, um, if this is something you wanna put in a portfolio, you can go through and give it proper text. You can find real Nike shoes. These, these product images are beautiful from Nike. Let's choose one more. That one's quite cool. So you can see by having a black background, the colors really pop. So let's take a look what that looks like. Might take a few minutes to load in.
But there we go. So we've got most popular for men. That section here. Our top section with the red that really stands out. And now we're going to select all of this. We're going to right click and we're going to create, uh, we're going to create a group. I'm going to call it for men. And now this is a trick. It's called, um, we're basically going to section the website in different colors. So I want to get a square and I'm basically going to draw a section here and I'm going to just give it just an off gray color. Because basically we, when you have websites, um, you'll see some websites are actually striped. So like a, like a, like a white and then a light gray and it just looks a bit better. So I'll show you why I'm going to click this and it selects all the group. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to move it above the rectangle. Then I'm going to select it all, group it and call it for women. And then I'm just going to move this up slightly in the box, move that, and then we'll preview that. Now you can't actually, so I'm looking at this now and I can't actually see the dividing color. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. I'm just going to do that. So there you can see how it actually like divides the sections with the eye in the middle. It just makes it a little bit easier to, um, basically for users to view. Let's just, let's just choose any ones for now and go through and do this. Quite nice. We'll, we'll leave that pink one there and we'll change this one to white one. Then we'll go through and we'll choose that one. That's a really nice shoe. Let's replace that one. And then one more. We'll just go for these ones here. Oops. Right, so now we can preview this. And we've got a nice looking website. See it all scrolls underneath the header. And now the only last thing to do on this page is we need the section that is our 10% offer. So the first thing we want to do is grab the rectangle tool again. You can also just put R on the keyboard if you want a keyboard shortcut. Then we're going to click and drag and make another full section. So we're just spotting it to the sides. And you know what? We're going to, I'm going to try this in like a light color and we're going to make it stand out. So as we scroll down the page, um, the offer really stands out and jumps out at you. So we'll make it, we'll make it quite big. I'm going to leave just a little space on the bottom for the footer which is the bottom bit of the section, which just really contains like any copyright information or um, links to other places in the site. But we can, we can do that in a different video. Um, so let's just grab our text tool and then we're just gonna click and drag and we're just gonna type something in. So want to get 10% off your next order. Now we're gonna center that. We're gonna make that bold. We even, might even make that black. No, we'll try that bold, it looks a bit too black. Then we're gonna grab that text and center it. Now you can see I, I use these centering tools all the time because as I said before, there's nothing more beautiful than um, symmetry. And that's what I always look for in all designs, that everything is always symmetrical. So make that even bigger and we'll try that 40 point size. So that looks good. Now. I like to just start by copy and dragging the text down instead of getting my text tool. And then I can just I can just make this one light, take it down to a size 26 maybe. And then I can say, sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive offers. Maybe try that in a regular. So there's our little, so there's our newsletter prompt. Then underneath that, we're gonna add a box. 
So I can snap that to these two grid lines. This is why the grid's so useful, because we're gonna reuse it quite a lot. Now let's make that about 40 high. I'm gonna fill that with a white color. It looks a bit too thin for me, so let's make that 50 now. So let's just preview that. So that is our box where we're gonna enter our name. So I'm gonna space it correctly. So put it under there, one, two, three, four, five. Put some text. And then I'm going to type enter email address. Now, left line text, make that text around 16 points. And then I'm going to select both vert um, vertically align it. So that's our text box there. And then underneath that, I'm just going to put a little. Um, a little star saying terms and conditions apply C R because the website will probably have a privacy policy so this will be the link to the privacy policy and I'll just make that size 20 then I can grab that give that some space in there one two three four five I'm gonna now select everything and start grouping them and then, re and then naming them. So I'm going to select all this, make all that a group. Then I'm going to center it within that box and then preview in the screen. So that's looking quite good. And then the last thing on most websites, uh, it's just called a footer. So the footer is just where they have the privacy policy. So for this example, I'm just going to grab some text. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to make my text white, and then I'm just going to uh, left align the text, make it about 16 points, and then I'm going to put um, copyright 2022 blackout limited. Uh, not TD, that's limited. There we go. Copyright blackout limited, and then Normally you have a link to you, um, to certain things in the footer, like legal documentation and stuff. So I'm just gonna have a, another link to uh, privacy policy. And I'm just gonna right align that text and I'm gonna uh, align it with that box there. So then I'm gonna go to my footer. Also links normally are, are a bit bolder than any other text so you know them. So then I'm gonna go to that. So there's the page, and that's your first prototype done in Figma. Pretty, pretty easy. Now you can share that link. You can uh, by going to share prototype. And if, if you ever, if, if this ever gets annoying when it comes up, you can press command backslash, or and then disappears, and then command backslash again, and it will um, it will come up. And you just click share prototype, copy the link, and then you can share it uh, with whoever you want. So if you enjoyed this tutorial. Check out my website for more tutorials like this and then share the link with me and let's see what, what you've made. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.